Hey everybody, John Craig here with Performance Plus Tennis. In today's video, we're gonna revisit a topic that is one of the most popular here on the channel. We got 167,000 views as of today, and that's on the topic of what is the ideal forehand grip for you to use. We're gonna revisit that topic. We're gonna to dive deeper into it and give you some different additional information that's gonna help you because it seems that you really resonated with this topic. I think a lot of you need help with your forehand grip. So we're gonna tear into that today and really help you with your forehand. So let's start out with the Continental Grip. And even though the Continental Grip isn't the most common grip used on the forehand, it still is a valuable grip to use, particularly on low balls or when you're in an emergency situation. But it's not the ideal grip to use for your normal conventional forehand. So Continental Grip is where the hand is right on top of the handle. So I've got a straight line from the shoulder to the tip of the racket. And the reason why this is a complicated grip to really use in, in the modern tennis is because the balls are up higher and they bounce up higher. In the early days when the ball stayed lower, the continental grip was, was a much more comfortable grip to use because it was easy to get the racket into a vertical position and carry the ball out. But when the ball gets up a little bit higher, this gets complicated. It's very difficult to hit high balls and hit topspin with the continental grip. Generally speaking, you probably end up slicing the ball. So if you're trying to hit a topspin ball, with your continental grip, it requires you to come up here and sort of roll the racket over. And for most of us, that's pretty complicated to do. So I wouldn't advise this. The other issue with the continental grip too is that you can see that contact is more alongside of me. If I get out in front where, it, where I'd like to be, I could never be in that position with a vertical racket face. So it has to be more alongside of me. And at this position, I really don't have a lot of support behind the racket. I'm just really on top of the racket here. So I don't really have a lot of leverage or a lot of power in this position. So for those reasons, it's very awkward to use the Continental Grip and I ill-advise that you use it. But I do recommend that you use the Continental Grip for emergency shots and very low balls. If you're running up into the front court and the ball is very low and you're inside the service line is near your ankles, the most comfortable way for you to get that ball over is to come underneath it and give it a little slice shot and the Continental Grip is the ideal grip for that. Also, when you're in an emergency situation, you're gonna be late, the Continental Grip, you can save the point by being late and making contact literally behind you with the Continental Grip and just hit a slice and stay in the point. So emergency situations and low balls, I still use the Continental Grip for that, but that's not the ideal grip for your conventional forehand. And when it comes to these types of shots, particularly the emergency shot, you'll often see Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic, even Rafael Nadal, they'll go to the Continental Grip and they'll make a shot to stay in the point rather than missing the ball trying to hit their conventional forehand. Next up is the Eastern forehand grip. And I find this to be probably the most versatile grip that of, among the options you have with your forehand. And the Eastern grip can be easily found by simply holding your racket in your non-dominant hand. And I like to place it out in front of me here, almost where the contact point is, and put the palm of my playing hand on the string bed and then slide the hand down and then I grip it from there. And when I do that, it relates the palm of my hand to the racket face. So the racket face does feel indeed like an extension of my hand. So if I just closed my eyes and imagine I was hitting the ball with the palm of my hand, that is the feel I have coming into the forehand. And then if I just put the racket in my hand in the same position, and I come out and imagine that I'm hitting with the palm of my hand, I find a vertical racket face very comfortably, very naturally. And you can see with the Eastern forehand grip that now my hand is behind the racket, my wrist is in a stable position behind the racket, and my elbow is behind the racket. So I've got a lot more stability coming into contact compared to the continental grip, okay? Another key thing here too is you'll notice that with the Eastern grip here, I have a flex in my wrists. So when you're playing, you wanna have your wrist flexed back because it's much more stable here than if it were straight. You really can't hit a forehand with a straight wrist and have a lot of stability with an Eastern grip. Continental, your wrist is gonna be pretty straight and it's not gonna have the same level of stability by comparison. But in the Eastern grip, I've got a lot of stability and my contact point is also very natural. It's in the same position that I would shake hands or open a door or even drive a car or work on a keyboard. So I'm in a comfortable position, comfortable range where I've got power that I can deliver through my shoulder and maintain my posture and my balance. So the Eastern grip is ideal. You can use it for low balls, you can use it for medium balls, and you can use it for high contacts as well. So it offers the greatest amount of versatility for different heights of balls, and you can also create plenty of spin on it. And you can also hit very flat with it as well. So it really does offer a lot of versatility. And for this reason, I think this is really a great choice for most players. 
And with the Eastern Grip, some of the best forehands in history have used the grip, including Roger Federer, Juan Martin Del Potro. In today's game, we see players like uh, Sissipas using it. It's very versatile. You can hit the ball very hard and flat, and you can also create a lot of spin and hit the ball at all different levels. So for most players, it is really the ideal grip, in my opinion. Next up is the semi-Western grip, and the semi-Western grip can be found by adjusting your hand from the Eastern grip one position under the handle. So now the palm of my hand is on a 45 degree angle rather than being vertical, it's now on a 45 degree angle under the handle. And really this is probably the more popular grip that we see not only on tour but also in club tennis because we have such a desire to hit heavy topspin. So this grip naturally puts you in a position where you really have to swing from low to high to get the ball to carry and travel. So we, it's very easy to hit a lot of topspin on, uh, on your forehand with this grip. You can also hit low balls too. You can pick the ball up and you can also hit the medium and the high. So it's very versatile as well, but it doesn't have the same degree of versatility as the Eastern forehand grip. So, and so for that reason, you know, it's, it's not as popular, it's not as common for me. It's not as, it's not as desirable for me as the Eastern grip is because when you get out to contact, you're a little bit more underneath, okay? And your contact point has to be a little further in front where the Eastern can be a little bit further back and comfortable. As I get into the semi-Western, I've got to be a little bit more in front. If I make contact back here, the racket face is going to be closed. I'm going to be weak in the shoulder. I've got to get out here in front where I can deliver the swing and have power, okay? So that's really where the semi-Western grip is. You can experiment between the Eastern and the semi-Western. Honestly, I'm kind of a modified Eastern where I'm sort of, feel like I'm sort of in between when I'm competing. I'm not in a pure Eastern, but I'm a little bit more in a modified grip. So you can experiment between those two to find your ideal grip. And finally, let's review the Western grip on the forehand. And there's been a lot of players that have tried to use the Western grip. There's been a lot of players that seemingly have used it. Back when Bjorn Borg started, everyone thought he used a Western grip. In reality, he didn't. He used a modified Eastern grip. But because he had an open stance and he had a loopy swing, and he had a lot of topspin with that, with that technique, everyone thought he was in a Western grip, but he really wasn't. You know, the Western grip can be found now by having your hand literally in a, a horizontal position under the racket. So you're, you're in this position. Now, what's good about this? You have to swing very aggressively upward into the ball to create a lot of topspin. But there's a lot of problems that are with, associated with this grip that are gonna make your forehand less penetrating, less reliable, okay? One of the big problems with this grip is that in order to get your racket face vertical, you literally have to have a chicken wing. Because if I just naturally extend my arm out, the racket wants to close. And if I just turn it this way, I lose the power in my shoulder. I'm no longer in a powerful position. So I've got to have the power in my shoulder coming in and I've got to be close and I've got to bend my arm at the elbow to make my contact. So my contact is a lot closer to me and therefore I'm not able to get the extension and the power that I could get when I'm out away from the body. And that's one of the key things that Roger Federer's, you know, his forehand is characterized by a lot of extension out away from the body where you can get a lot of racket head speed. If I go into that position with a Western grip, here I am. How can I get the racket vertical? Look how awkward it makes me and how weak it makes me. So in order to hit it this way, I have to be right in here. So all these Western grip players, they're all hitting the ball right in here. Nick Kyrgios hits it close to his body. Uh, Swiatek hits it very close to her body. Lots of elbow bend, kind of an awkward position. And you can see here, if you keep doing this for years and years and years, and you're not a professional player, you're taking a lot of the, the brunt of the, of the force where? Right here on the elbow. And that's why you don't see senior players playing with a Western grip. So if you're planning to play for a lifetime and play into your senior years, this is a grip that you want to avoid because it's going to just lead to problems and injury and it's going to make you frustrated and it's going to make it very difficult for you to play. So get into an Eastern grip and that's going to help you play for a lifetime, reduce your errors, increase your versatility, make you a better shot maker day in and day out, much more natural, much more comfortable, and it's going to make you a much, much better tennis player. So at this point in time, you might be thinking, John, geez, I need to change my grip. So I'm going to give you a bonus tip on how you can really work on changing your grip from one to the other. And really the best thing to do is get out on the court by yourself and just work on drop feeds, okay? So if I'm going to go with an Eastern forehand grip here, I'm just going to set up, make sure I have my grip. I'm going to drop the ball into this 
contact point area where I want to make contact with the ball and then play the stroke, okay? Now, if you've been playing with a Western grip or semi-Western grip and you go to, the, go to an Eastern grip, the first thing that's going to happen is the ball is going to go high. So you've just got to get used to holding it there and not feeling like you have to swing up so aggressively, okay? Um, but definitely you're going to have a little bit of trouble. If you go right out and you've been playing with a Western and you try to go to an Eastern grip or a semi-Western to an Eastern or a Western to a semi-Western, you're going to struggle. So you need to do a lot of repetition to get the feel of it. But I've worked with a lot of students over the years and you can do it. Actually, this is one grip uh, transition that is not that complicated to make and you can definitely do it. So get out there and just drop feed and get the feel of how you play the forehand with that grip and you'll get it in pretty short order. It won't take as long as changing a grip on a serve or anything like that. And of course, finding the right deal grip for, for you involves many different factors, some of which are how tall you are, what your stature is, what type of a court surface you play on. So for example, for a taller player that plays on a faster indoor court where the ball stays low, the Eastern grip is probably gonna be more ideal, okay? And even sometimes Continental for the super low balls. But if you're not a tall player, let's say you're five foot six and you're playing on a clay court or a hard court where the ball is bouncing up and the spins are making the ball rise and you're hitting a lot of balls up in the chest level, then a semi-Western grip would make more sense, perhaps for you. Depends on what your circumstances are and your stature, your game style, so forth. Um, but the Eastern grip, you could use at all different surfaces and all, for all different heights. And I think that's why you saw players like Juan Martin Del Potro, who was six foot six, use an Eastern grip. And then you also see other players that are conventional height, like Roger Federer, six foot one, who also use Eastern grip. So just, you know, you can adjust and adapt your style uh, to what the conditions are and what your personal stature is and your height and your build, all those things count. And the other thing you can also do at a higher skill level is you can change your grip for different conditions and positions. So inside of a point itself, I have played balls with an Eastern forehand grip, and I've also made a little adjustment and gone to a semi-Western grip to play a higher contact. So as you get more and more skilled, you can make subtle changes in your grip, even inside of a point to adapt to different balls that you receive and different types of shots that you want to play. The important thing is to get out there and experiment, understand what's, what's going on with your natural abilities, what the conditions are that you play in most of the time, and then find what's most comfortable for you. Thank you so much for watching today's lesson, and I hope that this lesson provides clarity on what the ideal grip is for you to optimize your forehand performance. Please give us a like, leave your comments down below, I'll always respond to your comments, and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. And then finally, if you're looking to dive deeper into building your forehand into a professional quality weapon, click in the link in the description down below and get access to my guide to developing your forehand. And this will give you a lot of insight into how to making your forehand the best it can be. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you in the next lesson.